Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching this video tutorial from. My name is Peter. Today we are going to be looking into how I built my lab from scratch. You can always do the same if you have uh, any time you have chance. In the last video, I actually show us how to download uh, VMware Workstation Pro. But you can also use the same uh, Hyper-V that comes with Windows 10 or Windows 11. Uh, the only cons I find between both is that they all look great for me and uh, I haven't found a way to do dynamic memory with VMware Workstation. But both is going to work great for you. If you have less resources, I would advise you to use uh, Hyper-V, but if you have more resources, I might advise you to use our VMware. So let's get started. Um, now that you watched my last video on how to download Workstation Pro, now I have done something before recording this video. I've actually downloaded my iOS, which is the Windows Server 2019. I have a Windows Server 2022. I have a the operating system which is the Windows and Windows 11 so I'm gonna go ahead and create a virtual machine right now I'm going to use the custom option then next here I have to select my Windows Server version I wanted to use so I decided to use this 2019 here if you have the window key you can actually put it or select which version of, version of the window you want to install here you just put your name next now it's gonna ask us to put the virtual machine name in this case we're building our first domain controller and I'm going to specify the location everything looks good for me this also look good for me. Okay, from the processor, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. The network type, I'm actually okay with this. Next, 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 next. <laughs> All right, I'm finished. It's kind of pretty simple and straightforward when you're using um, the VMware workstation. So I'm going to uh, put on the, the machine and it's going to do its things. If you do have any question, please do always put it in the comment section. I'll be very glad to answer your question. And remember, this is just a tutorial. It's not, uh, we're just working together. You know, we're gonna make mistake. We're gonna have a lot of question. Please, if you do, do not hesitate to reach out to me and I'll be very glad to work with you. So this installation is going to take a while. So you might see me uh, fast forwarding this video so that we can catch up with each other. So go get some coffee and uh, while this installation finish and I'll be right back. All right, looks like we have a Windows Server. Now, most of the time when this come up, 
I normally click on do not show this message again unless you really wanted to see it most of the time that it up uh, the window start and uh, let's see we're good right here so one of the things that I normally do is that I rename the computer so I'm going to rename it to DC01 so click on OK so it's going to do its things and it's going to say if you want to restart now or later i wanted to do that now well no, this coffee is really good all right let's wait for the computer to come back Wow, this is our first domain controller. We can do a lot with this, to be honest, guys. We can do a lot with this. We're going to be learning together. Now, we're able to see the computer name already change. So, how do we make it to become a domain controller? Most of the time, I encourage you to... Actually, maybe not the best practice, but for the lab, I normally turn on the high hands uh, security configuration for administrator to turn to off and I'm going to click OK. Alright, if you are using a um, Workstation Pro and you wanted to promote this domain, uh, this uh, server to a domain controller, you might face a little bit of issue. And I actually know about that because I've tried this as many times as possible. So, but uh, we can fix it and I'm going to show you. So let's go to manage and we're going to add roles. We're going to click on next. We make sure that we choose role based or feature based installation. We have a DC with the IP address. Now we're going to choose Active Directory Domain Services. Click on Add Features. Most of the time, I you know what? I play around, like check on all these roles. And if you want to get more information about these roles and services, you can check the Microsoft documentation. I might be able to put the link down below. You know, whenever you wanted to install a role on the server, you want to take a time to read more about the role you know get yourself familiar with what it does but in our case we're just going to do active directory domain services next 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 so we can click on restart the destination server automatically if required so do you want to allow yes install so this server is going to install Active Directory Domain Services, Group Policy Management, uh, Remote Server Administration Tools, Roles Administration Tools, Active Directory Domain Services and AD Tools, the PowerShell, and everything that is needed for this machine to become a domain controller. So let's wait a little bit so that we can we can see how to move next. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. All right, that is very fast. That's very fast, that's very fast. I really like that. So now, let's promote this to a domain controller either you can do it from here or if you accidentally click on closed you can always come here and say promote so we are not adding a domain controller to an existing one i'm going to show us in this video series on how to do that what we are doing here is that we are creating our first domain controller so you can actually give it a name, which I'm going to give it a uh, webworker.local. To be honest, you can call it anything you want. You can call it a uh, Costa Rica.lab. You can call it Costa Rica.local. 
this doesn't have to be oh you can actually call it costarica.com me it's your domain call it anything you want and but in my case i'm just going to use webwalker.locker so because it's a local and on-prem active directory next so let's see what it's going to do all right so most of the time i will encourage you like unless you really know what you're doing here i will encourage you to leave all of these as default so because these are false domain controller you're going to provide a password next all right you click on next let's see okay it's going to do his thing all right so next all right unless you really want to change this most of the time i put them on default so i don't change it unless you really have a well this is for lab so this is not <laughs> i mean it's just the same way you would do it in production but for our own lab purpose, uh, purpose, this is going to work for us. Okay, you can actually view a script right here to be able to automate this. I think I'm going to save this and try it later. Sure, why not? Let me just save it. Okay, let's close and continue. All right, this is the issue I'm actually uh, looking for. If you are using VMware Workstation Pro, you probably run into this issue and I'm going to tell you how to, I mean, I'm going to show you how to fix it. So try to read what it's saying. It said, currently the local administrator password is blank, which might lead to a security issue. You remember when we're trying to um, deploy this lab I actually put my name, but I didn't specify a password. So one thing you can do here is just go to local user management MSC. Go to the user and the administrator, you can set a password for it. So I'm going to put in my super password <laughs> and click on OK. That is done. So let's try it again. let's see all right as we can see everything good all right install so it might take um, some time to depends on your server resources or your hardware resources it might take a while and uh, we can keep enjoying our coffee while we wait for this to to set up. all right that is done look at that that was really fast so if you click on close your machine is actually going to restart by itself don't worry and if not you can actually restart it all right, look at that it's already doing what it has to do all right looks like we're getting somewhere here and um, I'm very happy that 
you're going to have your lab set up and you're uh, enjoying yourself by actually deploying your first um, delivery controller. I'm sorry, I said delivery controller, domain controller. Uh, please, if you do have any question, uh, please put it down in the comment section. I'll be very glad to connect with you remotely and I can help you out to deploy your first uh, domain controller. Uh, so let's wait for the computer to come back. All right, seems like uh, the main controller is back, you know. Now you can see we have the domain now. Awesome. You're doing well if you're actually following uh, these, um, these video series. And that is how you set up your first domain controller. You know, you can play around with it. You can see what is going on. You see that we have DNS, we have our Active Directory domain services here you can see you know you want to play around with it and you come over here you can see uh, users and computers this is where a computer is going to stay our domain controller which is this one if we do have an additional domain controller it's going to show here so that is it you know play around it look at the roles that already installed on the the main controller make sure you read a little bit about the main controller and on the next video i'm going to be showing us how to add additional domain controller which is going to be a dc2 and i'm going to join it to these uh the false delivery controller thank you so much for your time i'm very happy that you are taking step uh and in building your lab from scratch with peter and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye for now.